Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Welcome to Granny Camp. Today I wanted to discuss resetting your prepping emergency gear. There's two times a year when the clocks roll forward and backward, when we go in and out of daylight savings time and standard time, is a great time to review your survival prepping gear. Get out your supplies, figure out what are you missing, what's expired or out of date, things that need to be replaced or upgraded. It's a perfect time of year for looking over your gear and strategizing what are the things that I need, how can I make sure I'm providing the best opportunity to keep myself and my family safe in an emergency. If you've already been gathering your prepping emergency gear, you probably already have some idea of a container that you want. It can be anything from a plastic shoe box, a tote with a tight fitting lid, a backpack, a big duffel bag it can be whatever you have on hand there's no best bag or box or solution you want to use the things that you already have on hand it doesn't make any sense to start out by buying an expensive bag just to put your emergency gear if you have the extra money that's great but most of us don't it's more important that we start off with gathering the gear and then figuring out how much do we have where can we best store it and what are the things that we actually need. No matter what the emergency is, everyone needs fresh drinking water and food. So gather together at least a three-day supply of canned and packaged foods, foods that you can just open and eat, don't require any preparation, and at least three gallons of water. Just one gallon of water per person for at least three days. Look at foods like soups, chilies, tear open and eat pouches, peanut butter, granola bars, crackers, foods that you can eat without any preparation because in an emergency, you may not have power. You may not have the time and the opportunity to stop and cook something. You want to make sure that you can grab and go, open and eat it so that no matter what the circumstances, you have the energy that you need to help you get going so you can decide what to do next. A first aid kit. It can be a kit that you assemble yourself, fancy kit that you buy already made, and it can be even combination. Buy a basic kit and add the supplies that you want with it to make sure that it best suits your needs. Next, you want some hygiene supplies. You want things like a toothbrush, a hairbrush, some wet wipes, toilet paper, and then feminine hygiene products. And if you have a baby, make sure that you have diapers. Next, you need some lighting supplies. Start with some flashlights and include the batteries that go with the flashlights that you have. If you have small children, you may want glow sticks. You can snap them, shake them, and they can burn for eight to 12 hours, depending on the quality of the glow sticks that you buy. An item that I found that is useful is a battery operated candle that I got at the Dollar Tree. They're very bright, they're long lasting, and it's a common size battery that it's easy to have extras so that you have a bright light to utilize in a power outage. Using lights with batteries rather than with a candle or a flame helps you prevent a fire. A fire extinguisher is a piece of emergency gear everyone should have in their home at all times. Maybe you'll want some fire starting gear. It can be as easy as a waterproof container with some matches, some cotton balls, some petroleum jelly, jute twine. There are many different kinds of fire starters that you can make yourself or you can purchase already made. In an emergency, you'll need ways to communicate. Have a whistle. It's also a great idea to have an emergency radio. I like the Eaton Scorpion. It has a solar panel, it winds up, it has AM FM radio, and you can also use it to charge up your electronics. It has a USB port, and then you can use the solar panel or the crank to wind it up and charge your item. And as a bonus, it has a flashlight. Every emergency kit needs some tools Try a multi-tool, maybe a knife, things like duct tape, zip ties, small items. You don't want to go overboard. You don't want to include your entire workbench, but have a few tools and a way to handle small emergencies that come your way. A small sewing kit is also a great item to have in your emergency kit. It's best if you're prepping an emergency gear comes in a container 
that's easy to pick up and go, grab and go. It could be something like a tote with handles, a backpack, a duffel bag, something that you could easily, in an emergency, grab it and evacuate, take it out to your car, run outside of your home, have your things ready to go, gathered all together, then you can grab and go. If your container is too large or too heavy, break it down into two smaller bags, store them together. If you did indeed have to evacuate, that's when you want to make sure that you have something like a sleeping bag or an emergency bivy or a life tent that you could make a shelter if you needed to, perhaps an emergency survival blanket, black plastic bag, something that you could make a shelter if you had to leave your home. That's when you want to make sure that you have some fire starting equipment so that you have a way to keep your family warm. If you're resetting your gear for the winter, make sure you have things like hand warmers, some gloves, a hat. If you're resetting your prepping gear for the summer, make sure that you have a lightweight long sleeve clothing to protect you from the sun. Have some sunscreen and some insect spray. Because we don't know if we'll have to leave our home, make sure you have paper maps of the roads around where you live so that you can negotiate your way if you need to. Then make sure you have a copy of your identification, your insurance cards, your important numbers, the phone numbers, addresses, and contact information of those you would most want to get in touch with. It could be everyone from your family members to your child's school to your doctor, your pharmacy, the important numbers that you would need to contact everyone from your mother to your boss. Have those numbers written down and have them with your emergency gear. Add an extra set of clean clothing for each family member. Take into account the special needs of your family. Do you have a pet? Maybe you need to bring a leash, a harness, some extra food, prescription medicines you rely on, extra glasses, hearing aid batteries, all of those special circumstances you need to take into account for yourself. But remember, this is just for an emergency. Don't load this up like you're going on a grand excursion overseas for a month. You want this to be a three-day, 72-hour grab-and-go bug-out bag that includes the essentials you would need for several days. An essential item for every emergency is cash. Make sure you have as much cash as you can gather together and keep with your emergency gear. Don't rob your supplies for things that aren't an emergency. I actually went to the store the other day and it said there's a shortage of change. If you can't give us the exact amount, find another way to pay. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Fall or spring, it's a great time to reset your prepping emergency gear Go through your supplies, add things that are missing, replace things that are expired or out of date, and make sure that you go through each category from food, water, shelter, tools, first aid, hygiene. Be prepared to take care of yourself so you can make the best of whatever comes your way. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.